right. So it's clicking up. And here we are. So good morning, everybody. It's streaming school. It is Tuesday. My name is Michael. I'm here with Nish and Jackson, as always. How are you guys doing? Very well. Thank you very much. Yeah, good, good, good. How uh, how are we both feeling about another wonderful day? <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. good. Yeah, and, and as always. Um, it's like when they said, right, the lockdown is not going to be, you know, we're going to phase out July or something. Just like, okay, cool. Let's just get back into the trenches and just keep going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But, uh, well, as, as we're all now very accustomed, uh, Jackson, it's all about setting the day off on the right notes, which is why, as always, we come to you, sir. So I will leave it to you to ensure that we begin in a motivational manner. Thank you. Excellent stuff. Well, first of all, I'm going to just introduce myself to you if you're watching for the very first time. My name is Action Jackson, and I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm proud to say I'm happy. I'm happy every day. Why am I happy every day? It's a choice. If you're tuning in for the very first time, welcome to Streaming School. If you're returning, welcome back. Um, it is a pleasure to have you here with me and the team as well. Just to set you off on the day, my theme today is all about creating good habits. Yes, creating good habits. Show me your habits and I'll tell you your future. That's what my mother said to me many, many years ago. It did not make sense until now. I realized there's one bad habit I had. I used to leave the, uh, the, the iron on. I'd finish ironing, I'll leave it on. And my mom would say, you left the iron on again. What's your problem? I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now I became a grown man, had my own flat, and I still had the iron uh, on. At this point in time, no one could switch it off. Uh, the reason why I share that with you is this. There are certain habits you have right now that if you don't get rid of those bad habits, it will stay with you for a long time and it can actually cause detrimental effects to your success. And we don't want that. So just bear that in mind. Now, I always start with a bit of music in the background. So I just hope you could just join me on this moment in time. And um, just vibe with me for a second. Music for me is a good way to start the day. Yes, it's a good, whatever you do, if you start with music, it makes you feel so good. Say, I am amazing. And then I bounce. I say, I am amazing. See, no one knows, needs to know that you're dancing right now. I am amazing. Yes, the fun fact about life is this. Life is a joy. Life is a blessing. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So let me quickly just share my screen right here. And I want to just show you something um, that I've put together just for you guys today to kind of get you guys into the focus of success and making sure that you know how to direct your mind and direct your thoughts. Here we go. I believe I'm all right on the other side, guys. You are indeed. Yes, excellent. Now, um, this is my foundation. If anyone asks me, why are you so happy? Why are you so sad? Why are you so frustrated? Why are you so angry? What I'm about to show you is the secret to life. Your thoughts will always affect your emotions. Your emotions will always affect your actions. And your actions will always affect your results. That's why here at Streaming School, we kick you off with this motivation, get you in the zone so that your emotion can be in the right space so you can take the right action and get the right results. Now, this, I'm about to show you the levels of mastery. If you want to master anything, martial arts, writing, singing, dancing, starting a business, building your own career. The five things I'm about to show you are the things that are going to really, really, really help you. Stage one is knowledge. You get the knowledge of what you want to do and what you want to improve on. Say, for instance, I've got the knowledge about how to play a guitar. So I've gone on the internet and I've watched video clips from video clips on how to play the guitar. Now, stage two is perception. Knowledge starts to shift how you see things. For instance, I get the knowledge about healthy eating, but I'm not healthy yet. But it's changed my perception that sugary drinks is not good for my health. Okay, I've shifted my perception. But stage three is conviction. The next time I pick up a fizzy drink, I feel convicted in my heart knowing that this is fizzy drink, lots of sugar, shouldn't be drinking it, should be drinking water. That's conviction. 
Have I changed? No, I haven't changed yet. Mentally, I've changed. Emotionally, I'm changing. But physically, I haven't really changed. That's why the next stage is habits. What habits are you actualizing? Habits is where the rubber hits the road. Habit is when you look at your life and you say, I don't like this part of my life. I like this part of my life. I would like to improve this part. For me, I realized that during the quarantine season, I've been eating a lot and I've put a bit of weight. I haven't been doing a lot of exercise. I said, no, 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 no. That habit needs to change. So I want you to start thinking about yourself and your journey. What habits needs to change in your life? What are the things you need to improve? You know what needs to be done. It shifts your perception. You might feel the conviction, but until you do it, forget it. Because once you do that, action maybe you're reading consistently exercising or drinking water or saying positive things to yourself that's a habit some people have a habit of saying negative things to themselves now once you've got that in place guess what happens your character changes your character is ultimately what we want to transform you might know it but if you're not doing it you can't be it you might know it but if you're not doing it you can't be it so know about positive thinking, please. When I get you to say, I am amazing, you've got to keep saying it. Now, it takes 21 days to create a habit. That's the research. Now, the more you do something, the better you become at that thing. Now, I'm not sure whether or not I've shared this with you with regards to creating a vision board. When I created one over the weekend and I had lots of fun doing it, that's a habit of creating a picture of what you want. And here are a few that I got online and I saw people have created this for their lives. They're creating positive pictures about what they want to become. What do you want to become? And what are the pictures that you need to collect to create a vision board for your life? These are a few examples of people deciding that this is the kind of future that they want. Got to hear a gymnast who wants to really, really fulfill her dreams. Whatever you do, I want you to take whatever we're teaching you and put it into habit. Don't just leave it in your head. You've got to become it. You've got to become it. I finished with this guy. I love telling his story. Jim Carrey, an amazing guy who had a dream of becoming an actor. And he wrote himself a check for $10 million. That was his habit. That was his vision. He didn't just know it. It didn't just change his conviction. It changed his action. And then he became what he wanted. All because... It was a habitual process. So whatever you do today, get a picture of who you want to become and please make sure you do that thing. It takes 21 days to build a new habit. You've got to start today. Show me your habits and I will tell you your future. Remember, you are amazing. Have a great day. Do come and follow me on Insta, TikTok and YouTube. Action Jackson Live. Over to you guys over at Free Streaming School. Thank you. Thank you. And this is a man who's probably living on a couple of hours sleep at the moment because of newborn baby <laughs> and whatnot. So no, if he can look that motivated, then what's your excuse? What is your excuse? <laughs> but no, thank you. Exactly. What, what are you up to today? Uh, so today I've got a few more um, live calls and then I'm reflecting upon uh, doing some more things for the young people as well. We're creating some more content for teenagers uh, across the world. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, that's, that's obviously that's amazing stuff, mate. And uh, I hope yeah. that goes really well today. And as always, you are amazing as well. You need to remember that, all right? You are amazing. Thank you so much. So you guys, Michael and Nisha, thank you so much. We do miss Leon today. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. he's forever in our hearts and forever in our minds. Yeah, exactly. But you're, you're, be you're better looking than him, so it's all right. Depends what you're into, mate. It does depend what you're into. <laughs> uh, see ya. See you, Jason. Thank you. I'll take my compliments where I can get them as well, Nish. I've got to be honest. No, I know. Everyone should see your avatar here. <laughs> it's, it's strawberry blonde. Strawberry blonde on that avatar. Right, not quite. But we won't go into that. Now, um, as you guys may be aware, our session next is our media session. So what typically happens here is we work with the wonderful Matt and his glorious beard. And because obviously he's busy at school helping students, uh, you know, on the front line and all that sort of thing. However you feel about that, I think he's doing a wonderful job. And obviously we need to make sure that we're supporting teachers as best we can. 
Matt has kindly recorded the session for us today. So what I will do my best to do for you now is to bring Matt to your houses, to your living rooms, as if he was there. So if you give me just a moment, I shall do just that. <laughs> There he is, and I will leave it to him. Over to you, sir. Good morning, and welcome to another GCSE Media Studies Streaming School lesson. My name is Matthew Murphy, and today I'm going to be taking you through some more GCSE and BTEC Media Studies content for you, which I hope you're going to find interesting and informative. What we're going to look at today uh, means that we're going to have to circle back and look in more depth at something that I've previously covered, which is audiences. So if you haven't yet seen the video, which is around audiences and demographics, then that might be useful to watch that before uh, before this video, because this one's going to kind of circle back to some of that and go a little bit deeper in. Uh, so um, first thing this morning, we're going to think about primary and secondary audiences. Now, if that's not a phrase that you're yet comfortable with, with primary audience, you can consider that to be something like the target audience, the target audience for which a product is aimed at. Uh, so if you take five seconds to think about who you think or a pig might be. So hopefully you're thinking that uh, the primary audience, the, the target audience uh, for Peppa Pig is small children. And you'd be right in thinking that they are the primary audience. However, um, if you think about when you watched Peppa Pig, um, you might remember that there were other people in the room whilst you were watching it. And simply enough, they are the secondary audience. So it's not necessarily the people for whom they are the target of that particular media text, but they also happen to be slightly more passive viewers of that product or passive consumers of that product. So young children's parents would be the secondary audience for Peppa Pig. Just to make sure that this is well and truly understood by everyone, um, I'm going to take a different media product, uh, the latest Star Wars movie, and I want you to think about who might be the primary and the secondary audience for those um, product. So, uh, um, in my opinion, the primary audience for the new Star Wars films is predominantly um, the people who originally watched the Star Wars films from previous decades, uh, people that know the Star Wars franchise, if you like, and they are the primary target audience. However, much like myself, the people that originally watched the first Star Wars films now have parents of their own. And so they take their children along to see products like this. And so that's generating a whole other secondary audience as well. And obviously these, these concepts of primary and secondary audi audience are fluid and they change over time and they allow different audiences to access different products at different life stages. Um, but crucial uh, vocabulary that every media student needs to know is the difference between primary and secondary audience. Um, and today's lesson is going to focus very much on the audience research, the, uh, the fact that media producers spend a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of money in finding out if the techniques and the tactics that they use to capture a primary audience, whether that's young people, middle-aged people, pensioners, you name it, whether those tactics and techniques, whether they actually work, how do they find that out, and what do they do with that information? So one of the ways that they find this information is they use some they use audience statistics. So the, those things will change depending on which media industry or sector we're talking about. So obviously, in the case of moving image media, actual viewing figures or box office receipts will be the way that they can measure that. But obviously, uh, web based media and other such things, you can generate that data in, in different ways from actually the number of hits that a website gets, etc, etc, etc. So Take a second to think, why is this kind of information important? 
hopefully you're thinking that the reason that this information is important to media producers is so that they can see that they are actually getting the target audience, the primary audience that they want, they're actually getting them to consume that product. If they don't go out and find that information, they won't know if they are actually capturing the audience they're trying to get. You might have a secondary question, which is, well, how does how is this information actually obtained? Um, and that's one of the things that I'm going to be talking about in this 20 minute lesson. So the Broadcasters Audience Research Board is how TV broadcasts, both uh, terrestrial and uh, pay-per-view, uh, and that's how they are measured. And that's something that we're going to dig into a little bit this morning. You may have come across news reports and other such things in the media about how a certain show gets a certain number of views or Britain's Got Talent is the most watched TV show of whichever year. And you might be wondering, well, how do they know that? Where did that information come from? And obviously the BARB is the organisation responsible for capturing that data. And it's extremely important uh, for producers of moving image media, especially TV media, uh, that they use BARB data to, to track their audience. And one of the things that I'm going to do this morning for you is to show you what this information looks like and why it's useful not only to uh, media studies students but also to professionals working in moving image media as well. One of the things that the BARB does is that it captures the data of who's watching which TV programs and more importantly on which devices because if we think about the demographic groups that we were thinking about a few weeks back you can probably begin to understand that different demographic groups will access their TV media on different devices so we can see here from the screen that uh, the BARB data is uh, gathered in such a way that we can see which device it was actually viewed on so I'll just click on this and let it load up the figures. We can see that in this particular data, the most recent data that the BARB have available, we can see what the most watched, the most viewed TV shows were. Um, so we can see the Britain got, Britain's Got Talent and other such things are extremely well viewed. Um, it will also tell us um, specific figures um, of people viewing and more importantly, on which device they viewed it on. So if we just click on here, number six in the chart, it will show us in pie chart form exactly how that particular media is being viewed. Extremely useful for the producers of this content. They can see not only which shows are being watched, but and by whom and where. And what the BARB do to generate this data is that they ask for volunteers to basically uh, keep a log of which TV shows they are watching uh, and then give this information to the BARB to collect into data like you see here. So that kind of information is going to be super important for any kind of producer of moving image media. And the BARB is just one example of the way that that information is gathered. So when we're talking about audience research, like we just saw from the BARB, there are basically two types which a media student needs to be aware of. One of them is so-called primary research, and uh, primary research is simply any research which is conducted firsthand by the person themselves. Secondary research, on the other hand, is just research which is conducted through other means, usually through the internet or any kind of research which wasn't done by yourself personally. So, um, I wanted to know what the world's favourite colour was. Uh, so I found this uh, information on YouGov on the internet and you can see the results there in front of you. So my question to you is simply this, would you consider this to be an example of primary or secondary research? Take five seconds to have a think. If you said that this was secondary research, you'd be absolutely right, because obviously I did not conduct this particular research myself. Um, the only way for this to be classified as primary research would be to, for me to go to Britain and Germany and the United States and ask everybody that I saw what their favourite colour was and then collate that information. 
This information, however, I've just gone onto the YouGov website and searched for what's the world's favorite, most favorite color. And this is what I found. So a clear example of secondary research. I'm relying on secondary methods to find this information. However, here we have a, an organization called Take Part in Research who are looking for volunteers to take part in some research, a focus group as it's called, about social media, research, uh, social media adverts. Um, so it takes five to 10 seconds and think, would this be an example of primary or secondary research on the part of the makers of these adverts? So if you said that this was primary research, you'd be absolutely right, because the the answers that people are giving to this is coming directly from the people themselves. Uh, it's uh, direct face to face research. So as well as knowing what primary and secondary research is, um, for the higher level grades, both in coursework and in, it's useful if you know uh, what the advantages and disadvantages are of both primary and secondary research. So again, I'm going to pause for 10 seconds and just get you to have a think about the question that's on the screen. What are the advantages of conducting primary research? And the information in the purple box there is just to, uh, just to remind you of what we mean by primary research. So some of the advantages of primary research are that um, the data that you get from it is pretty reliable. The information that you get will be valid as well, um, obviously dependent on the questions that are being asked, but you can vouch for how uh, reliable and valid the information that you are getting from the research is because you conducted it yourself. And finally, to some degree, you can say that your research is objective. Um, it, it depends on uh, the types of questions that are being asked, because obviously, if you ask leading questions, you can get people to answer them in a certain way. But um, to with it, up to a point, um, primary research, uh, when conducted, is pretty objective. So um, take 10 seconds to think about what the advantages of secondary research would be. And again, in the purple box are the most obvious instances of what secondary research in the medium might be. So secondary research tends to be able to be done quickly. Uh, very quickly, I was able to find out what the world's most favorite color was. Um, it's pretty easy to conduct. Um, doesn't require a great deal of effort, especially if uh, we use either internet research or other kinds of uh, digital technology. Um, but if I pause there for a second, um, the disadvantages are kind of hidden in there as well. Because if I just cycle back for a second, we were saying that secondary research is quick and easy. Um, those are some of the disadvantages of primary research. Whilst primary research might be reliable and valid, it's not quick or easy. To undertake primary research of your own is going to be pretty time consuming. Um, so the disadvantages, if you like, of primary research are that it's not quick and it's not easy. Um, but the flip side is that um, the disadvantage of secondary research is that it's not reliable necessarily and you can't 100% guarantee of the validity of it. I don't really know just how uh, valid or objective that world's favorite color research was that I found. Uh, so we can see that they are mirror images of each other in terms of their benefits, sorry, their advantages and their disadvantages. So as well as talking about primary and secondary research, we can also break down the research in a further way. One being qualitative research. So qualitative is measuring people's opinions or attitudes or behaviors. Um, so if we look at the word qualitative, hidden within it is almost the word quality. So it's a way of us remembering what that word is, because in all fairness, qualitative is a tricky word to both say and spell. Uh, but if you just remember that it's to do with quality, 
Uh, so any research that I undertake where I'm asking about people's individual opinions or attitudes, we could call that qualitative research. And of course, that could be primary or secondary research. The other type, the other flavor, if you like, of research that we can undertake is quantitative. And again, if we think about the root word of there, uh, we've got the word quantity hiding within that, uh, which of course is about how many or how much or numerical data of some kind. So rather than it being about opinions, which is qualitative, quantitative research is actually putting uh, those things into quantifiable numbers. So let's try some examples. So if we look at 15% of people over the age of 25 watch Hollyoaks, do we think that the information there would be qualitative or quantitative? If you answered quantitative, you'd be right. Because if we think about it, 15% is putting numbers against these, putting things in quantifiable terms, how much and how many. So a statement like that, research of that kind, would be quantitative research. We can't be sure just from that statement whether it's primary or secondary research because there's no information whether that's been done by uh, the makers of Hollyoaks or it's simply information received off the internet. Secondly, uh, if we take a statement like, do you prefer iOS or Android when thinking about purchasing a mobile phone, would the responders to that be giving qualitative or quantitative research responses. If you answered qualitative, you'd be correct, because again, if we remember, qualitative is about opinions and attitudes. There's not necessarily a quantifiable number attached to that is simply, do you prefer this or this? It's an opinion, it's a quality question. So one of the things that you would likely come across whilst looking at qualitative research is something called the Likert scale. And the Likert scale is used in questionnaires to find out a level of disagreement or agreement with a particular statement. And it's a really useful way that producers of media research can find out people's opinions and the psychology behind their choices. So if we see something like this, uh, a statement whereby whether we strongly disagree or agree or strongly agree, that five level scale is called the Likert scale. And obviously we see that a lot in uh, research of any kind, both in the media and outside of the media sphere. So I've gone through quite a lot of information this morning. So what I wanted to leave you with is a task that's going to enable you to consolidate all of this information and try out these terms to go back over this video and make sure that these key terms are in your long term memory and you can use them on demand. So the task is to use the vocabulary from this lesson to either describe, analyze or evaluate how you would measure and track a new media text that you were producing. So imagine that you're producing a new film or a new TV show or a new uh, smartphone app. How are you going to use audience research, uh, whether it's qualitative or quantitative, um, to find out if you're reaching the audience that you're trying to get? Uh, what would be the, the advantages and disadvantages of various research types? How will you know that you've hit the target audience that you're trying to meet? And remember to describe, to analyze and to evaluate. Those three are moving up the scale in terms of the quality of the answer. Describe is a fairly basic answer, analyze is going deeper and evaluate, saying giving reasons, pros and cons, disadvantages and advantages. That's at the higher end of the mark scheme. I want to thank you for your time this morning. I hope this has been both informative and enjoyable. Um, I hope the rest of your week is uh, good and I will see you next week for some more GCSE Media Studies streaming school lessons. Thank you and thank you Matt as well uh, streaming live from wherever classroom is now working at the moment. So thank you guys and you've heard obviously Matt highlight the task that he wishes for you to undertake. Please go on to the Streaming School portal where you can view all of his previous resources and all of the previous lessons and resources and activities across all of our lessons. And in five minutes time, we will be continuing, but this time with Sam in PE form. So take a quick break, get some refreshment, and we'll see you guys very, very shortly. Looking forward to it.